evening. Boys and girls, it's great to be back with you for another night of fun, games and some cool crafts. It's been 12 weeks since you guys joined us for our adventures in ancient Egypt and we are so glad that you are back to join with us for Celebrate the Light 2020 as we learn about Jesus who is the true light of the world. Over the next 30 minutes we will be bringing you some crafts, a game to test your memory, hear a fantastic story and we have an exciting special episode of The Adventures of Dr Potty written specially for tonight. That's right, I can't wait to see what he's been up to since we last saw him in August. And then we're going to round up our night with an exciting fireworks display. So Andrew, will we get started? Sounds like a great idea, Grace. To take part tonight, you're going to need a few items from around the house. Hopefully, an adult at home has downloaded our Celebrate the Light guidebook for you, which details everything that you need. Most of the items you'll need can be found around your house, but don't worry if you don't have all the items you need for the crafts. You can always watch how to do them with us and then try them tomorrow. You will need a page and a pen or a pencil for the memory game. And of course, don't forget your all important juice and biscuits. So let's kick things off with a song. So jump up on your feet, give yourselves a big shake. Our first song tonight was a new one for a Holly Bible Week. So you should know it. It's My Lighthouse. Troubled sea, oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea.
That's it guys, well done. It's almost time to play our memory game. But before we do, we are really glad that you have joined us tonight and we would love to see pictures of your finished crafts. Now, we're only here for one night this time round, so we can't show them on the screen like we did in the summer. However, we will put them up on our social media pages. Just get an adult to email them to ballygownyouth at gmail.com. Then keep an eye on our social media pages over the next few days. So it's time to grab your pen or pencil and a page because we want to head over to Grace now who has a fantastic memory game for you. All right, kids, I need you to get ready. In just a moment, nine items are going to appear on the screen for 60 seconds and you need to try and remember as many of them as you can. Afterwards, you're going to have 90 seconds to write them down or draw them. So you need to try and remember them. There are nine of them all together. Are you ready? Go! to write or draw everything you can remember. Are you ready? Go! We have the cross, a torch, fire, a lighthouse, a star, a light bulb, a firework, a match and the Bible. How many did you remember? I'm sure you all did great. Thanks Grace. Boys and girls, it's time for our first craft and it's a really messy one. For this craft, you're going to need all the items on your craft one list in your booklet. So you're going to need some pots, some plastic cups, something that you can put water and paint into. You're going to need four straws and you're going to need four different colours of paint. You can use as many different colours of paint if you want, but just make sure you have a pot and straw for each one. You're also going to need some washing up liquid. So this craft's really easy. You're going to want to put some paper or something down to cover the table so you don't make a mess of it. Then take your pots, put about this much water in, just about a quarter of the way up, and then take your washing up liquid Squirt three big squirts of washing up liquid into each pot that you have. Then put some paint into each pot, making sure you only put one colour per pot. And you probably need about four big squirts of the paint. Then take your straw and mix up the paint and the washing up liquid together. Then you're gonna to need to get your page. A white page works best. So an A4 one is good, okay? So take that, 
put it to the side. Then, this is the fun bit, take your paint pot and blow some bubbles, okay? Then once they get to the top, they're just about to come over, pull your straw out and just gently set your page on top like that, okay? Then you're going to want to change your paint colour and we'll go for the blue one this time. Do the same thing again. That's it. And then we'll try the red one. But you know what boys and girls, you don't want to watch this. so. In three, two, one. And just like that, you will have a page with fireworks. I'm sure that your page is gonna look so much better than mine. But if you let them dry, then you can get a paintbrush and some black paint and draw some houses on the bottom of it so as it looks like fireworks in the sky. I love making bubble fireworks and it's great fun and you make loads of mess, but make sure you help whoever's at home to tidy up. But do you know what guys, yours are gonna look so much better than mine and I can't wait to see your pictures coming in. And talking of fireworks, it's not that long to go now until our fantastic Celebrate the Light fireworks display. But I don't think it's quite dark enough just yet to see them. Grace, what do you think? No, I still think we need to wait a little bit longer. But while we wait, I'm going to read you a story. I hope you've been enjoying our bedtime stories each Saturday night. If you haven't managed to catch them yet, you can still watch them on our YouTube channel. Then they will return next Saturday at 7pm. Here's our story. Bucket Boy, Light of the World. Once there was a boy, a boy with a bucket on his head. So people rather cleverly called him Bucket Boy. Now, in many ways, Bucket Boy quite liked his bucket. After all, it kept his head safe. When it rained, he stayed dry. And when it came to a tense moment in a football match, Bucket Boy couldn't see what was going on, so he remained completely and utterly calm. Go on, go on, score, score, defend, tackle him. But there were some problems. Bucket Boy couldn't see through his bucket, so he kept bumping into people. And he discovered it's very hard to make friends when you've got a bucket on your head. Some children decided to play hide and seek. They loved to play hide and seek. They all gathered and someone said, I'll seek first. Come out, come out wherever you are. But Bucket Boy didn't move and nobody noticed him. Right, said Timmy. That seems to be everyone. We're going to go and play football. For a while, Bucket Boy stood there thinking he had won the game. But then he realized in fact, no one had even known he had been playing. Bucket Boy didn't have much more success in school. The teacher said, OK, children, who can tell me what things you might use to help you build a sandcastle? Everyone put up their hands. They were shouting things like spade, sand, shells, or even a digger. What about something beginning with B, the teacher said. Everyone shouted, a ball, bamboo, beach, a bear. And then finally, Henry shouted, a bucket. Well done, their teacher said. I don't know how you guessed that. But no matter how difficult it got, there was always one place Bucket Boy knew that people would always notice him, and that was at home with his mum and dad. Bucket Boy arrived home. Mum, dad, I'm home. Oh, hi, son, his dad said. How was your day, darling, said his mother. Bucket Boy said, it was rubbish. But I thought you liked school, said his dad. No, dad, I don't. I hate school. I'm different. And I don't have any friends and no one even knows I'm there because I'm not cool enough. What are you talking about? You're amazing, said his mum. That's right, son. You're really generous and kind, said his dad. You're really good at playing the piano and swimming too. Bucket Boy replied, no one ever sees that stuff. His dad said, well, to be honest with you, son, it might not help that you insist on in wearing that bucket on your head the whole time. Bucket Boy said, I feel safe under my bucket. It helps keep me dry and I can ignore anything that might be a little bit scary. 
And what about the danger of sunburn? His mum said, well dear, you're in Belfast, so I think you'll be okay. And his dad said, son, you're right. Life might be a bit easier if you stay under your bucket in the dark. But to be honest, life will be a lot more fun, much more worthwhile. And if you threw away that bucket and let the light in. Bucket Boy said, well, if you say so. And suddenly Bucket Boy had made up his mind. He threw off his bucket. Bucket Boy said, whoa, this is amazing. It's so colourful. I can't wait to see what it all looks like. And he went off. He saw the sights. He made friends and he never put a bucket on his head again. And you know, Bucket Boy might seem really silly, but we all often make the same mistake. Jesus says to us all, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And too often we ignore him, carrying on our normal lives, keeping the buckets on our own heads. But maybe it's time to take the buckets off. All right, you all listened really, really well. I think it's time to jump up and do something really energetic. Let's see your best Superman pose because it's time to sing really loudly about Jesus, our superhero. I love that song and I can't wait until we can all be back in the halls together singing and dancing again. Tonight we are celebrating the light as we learn and remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And Grace, I know that you have a fantastic lantern craft for us all to do now. Yes, I do. So this is what we're going to make. We're going to make a lantern. You can see I've been able to decorate mine as well. So first of all, you need to get a page like this, a big page and a little strip of paper. So you can just cut that off your page. So we start with a great big rectangle and then you need to fold it in half to make a long skinny rectangle. So if we fold that over, 
then we've got our skinny rectangle. Then you need to take your scissors and we're going to cut some triangles into it. So if we've got the open bit facing away from us and we're going to cut into the fold. Okay, and it should look something like this. You can make your triangles as big or as small as you would like. After you've got all this done, you need to open it out again and you've got lots of diamonds on your paper. Then you're going to take your glue and put some glue right along the end of your page. Like that. And we're going to roll it up like this and stick it together. then you should be able to set it up like this and if you press down on it a bit like that it makes our lantern shape okay then you need to take your strap put a bit of glue on each end and just pop it inside then you can decorate it or do whatever whatever else you want with it I have a little battery operated light under mine or you could shine a torch inside or something like that instead. Okay, so you can make more lanterns over the next few days and then use them to decorate your windows to show everyone about how Jesus is the light of the world. Thanks Chris. Tonight we've been learning all about the light. Who knows what happens when you walk into a room with no windows and no lights and they're all turned off? Can you see anything? No, because it's dark. But what happens if you turn on the light switch? It's all light in the room and the darkness goes away. I want to read to you some verses from the Bible that are all about light, the light of the world. John chapter three, verses 16 to 21 say, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world guilty, but to save the world through him. People who believe in God's son are not judged guilty. Those who do not believe have already been judged guilty because they have not believed in God's one and only son. They are judged by this fact. The light has come into the world, but they did not want the light. They wanted darkness because they were doing evil things. All who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light because it will show all the evil things that they do. Because those who follow the true way come to the light and it shows the things they do were done through God. It's a very, very long verse. But tonight, I really want us to think about verse 21. But those who follow the true way come to the light. And it shows that the things they were done were done through God. But who is the light that we're talking about in these verses? It's Jesus. In fact, earlier in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have eternal so when these verses from John 3, 16 to 21 talk about the light, they're really talking about Jesus. Jesus came into the world so that we could be forgiven for the wrong things that we have done. He came so that he could be our best friend. And not only that, he came to teach us all about God and how we can follow him. You see, being friends with Jesus is really, really special because Jesus came to help us and take those things away just like we heard in the story that Grace read us earlier. But you know guys, do any of you love eating biscuits? I love biscuits, but sometimes I would have a biscuit before my dinner and we all know that we shouldn't do that and it is wrong. But have any of you ever been caught sneaking a biscuit out of the biscuit tin when you shouldn't have? I think some of you have. Well, it's things like that that the Bible is talking about when it says that we are sinning. 
Sinning is when we do something wrong that we know is wrong. We all know that when we do something wrong, we should say sorry. And the same thing happens when we do things wrong that upset God, because he doesn't like it when we do things that we shouldn't. But Jesus came to earth and died for us so that we could say sorry to God and still be friends with him. He came to show us how to do that. And if we think back to the question that I asked you at the very beginning about being in a dark room and how we could see, we turned on the light. And just like that, if we ask Jesus into our hearts to be our special friend, then he is the light of the world and he shows us how to say sorry to God and the wrong things we have done. I think that is pretty cool. And you know what? People who have asked Jesus into their hearts are called Christians. And if you haven't done that, then you can do that anytime. All you have to do is pray a prayer to say sorry for what you've done wrong and ask Jesus into your heart. And if you've got our app or your parents do, then there's a special leaflet on there that tells you all about what it means to be a Christian. But first, let's pray. God, we thank you that we can join together tonight to learn about Jesus, who is the light of the world. God, we pray that you will help us to grow to know him, to learn more about him and to have him as our friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Andrew, I've brought us, well, I, we've got some tea. Does everyone else have their juice and biscuits? That's great, Grace, but where's my tea? Boys and girls, you might want to go and grab your juice and biscuits because it is almost time. In fact, it is time for the return of the adventures of Dr. Potty. So sit back, relax and enjoy Dr. Potty and the search for the missing light. Good morning, Dr. Potty. Oh, good morning, Denise. <sighs> Dr. Potty, I finished doing the cleaning with Mummy, but that strange new box you built keeps making strange sounds and saying, Potty, travel, online, now. Dr. Potty, what have you got there? You look really confused. Is it your mouse homework? No, it's something that's causing me far more trouble than my two times tables. What is it? It's an old scroll I found whenever I was putting the relic with the missing onion shaped piece away from the prince for, for Princess Potty. What does it say? Is it another mystery for us to solve? You know, I think it might be. Oh no, my face still hasn't recovered from the last time. Don't worry, Denise. The mystery is all about the light of the world. The light of the world? That's an easy one. It says here that we that there once was a man who lived on earth and he was the light of the world yes that's right his name was but i can't work it out how can a man you know be a light well he wasn't just any man he was a son of well of course he wasn't any man he was a human light yes but dr potty he wasn't an actual light oh i know was he a light named man? Oh, Dr. Potty, you're so silly. Oh, I've forgotten this bit. Not only was he the light of the world, his light is internal, which means it never goes out. This guy must be pretty special. Well, he was. I keep trying to tell you. I've been up all night trying to find out more about him or even find a light that is eternal, but they all go out eventually. Well, this special light isn't exactly like a light that you can see. Like the light from a light bulb or a flame. You see this light through people's actions, how they talk to each other and look out for each other. We've seen a lot of this over the past few months with people helping each other out and looking out for their neighbours. But it says here that he will be the light to our path. How does that work if he isn't an actual light? Oh, Dr. Potty, you've got this all jumbled up. I've tried lots of things to search for him. Let me show you some of the things I've found. First off, I got Mummy to bring me the biggest, brightest lamp I had in my office. I had to turn it on and it burned brightly for ages, but then we had a problem with the light my path bit. What happened? Well, I spent a few hours watching Postman Pete's new show. You know, the one, Postman Pete and his black and white sheep. Postman Pete delivers letters in the village of Greenville on Netflix. Okay, and how is that a problem? Well, someone must have turned on the relic detector um, because I started to feel the potty effect. 
So I jumped up and ran to the bathroom, but I, when I left the room, the lamp didn't light my path anymore, and well... Oh, Dr. Potty, what happened? I tripped over Mummy and, you know, fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh, you do get yourself into some messes. So I decided that the lamp couldn't be the light of the world. Then I thought, I'll test out my torch. So I turned it on, and it worked great, especially when it was time to go to bed, because it lit up my path so I could see where I was going. But when I woke up this morning, it had gone out, so it wasn't eternal. Dr. Potty, you've got it all wrong. Do you want me to tell you who the light of the world really is? Yes, please, Denise, because Mummy's getting very cross with me, with breaking things, hurting myself, and using up all the batteries. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I keep meaning to ask, what happened to your hand? Well, that was my closest guess to finding out the identity of the light of the world, or so I thought. Mummy lit a fire and it was great because it was able to light my path and it could be eternal if I kept putting more logs on, but there was just one wee problem. What was that? I couldn't take it with me everywhere I went. Oh, Dr. Potty, you are silly. So, Denise, I don't know what to do because I've tried everything. I've lit matches, turned on the oven, lit a candle, watched the sun and loads of other things, but they all eventually go away so they're not eternal. But Dr. Putty, that's what I've been trying to tell you. The light of the world isn't a light like any of those things. It isn't? No, the light of the world is a man named Jesus. He was God's son and he was born over 2,000 years ago. But how can he be our internal light and always with us? Because if he's 2,000 years old, boy, he is old. That would make him older than Andrew and even older than Robin or Nick. <laughs> Jason wasn't, wasn't any man. He was God's son. He was born over 2,000 years ago on the very first Christmas. Then he died on a cross for our sins. But he came back so we could be saved and so we could live a life for God and be friends with him. He came to bring God's light into the world and show us the best way to live. But how is his light eternal and with us always? And how does he light our path? Well, those people who call Jesus their friend are called Christians and have the Holy Spirit inside them which is how God puts his light into them. And then they go out and show God's love and light to those around them. Ah, I see. And Jesus lights our ways through the Bible, which I think is where that scroll came from. I get it now, Denise. So he isn't a light like a bulb or a fire or anything like that. He is far better and he loves everyone so all of us can have his light inside us. We can go out and be the light to the world, teaching people about God and showing them his light. Exactly. You know, Dr. Potty, sometimes I think you should ask me these things before you go off and try to work them out for yourself. But then we wouldn't get to have lots of exciting adventures and I wouldn't have any exciting stories to tell you. Hmm. And the boys and girls love to see our adventures so, and hear our stories. That's true. Denise, what did you just say? I said that's true. No, 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 before that. Hmm. No, Denise, before that. What did you just say after you talked about how you and Mummy had finished the cleaning? <laughs> Dr. Potty, that was ages ago. What, what did you say about my new project? Oh, the big weird box thing? Yeah, 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 that. Oh, nothing much. Uh, just that I kept saying, Potty, travel, now, online. I've done I've... it, Denise! You've done what? This is so exciting, Denise! What is? My time machine! It's working! Your what? My time machine, come on, let's go, we don't have a moment to lose. My name's Denise and that was Dr. Potty and we're going time travelling. Dr. Potty, wait for me. Wow, I love Dr. Potty. Well, don't worry, Andrew, because Dr. Potty will be back for two fantastic episodes this Christmas in Dr. Potty and the Search for the New King. Yes, brilliant. I can't wait. But Grace, do you think it's dark enough yet? Yes, Andrew, I do think it's dark enough now. Brilliant. Boys and girls, we've had a fantastic night with you tonight, celebrating the light and remembering how Jesus is the light of the world. It has been great to be back together again, but we wanted to make sure tonight ended with a bang. And as this is Celebrate the Light, we thought that we should make our ending something very special. So we're going to cross over to our cameras outside as we enjoy our fantastic Celebrate the Light fireworks display. Enjoy!